Welcome everybody to our uh, webinar Wednesdays. And today we've got a really great, uh, really great guest. It's uh, Matt Hollingsworth from We Work Remotely. And uh, you know we're really excited. We've been waiting a little bit of time to get some time on his calendar so that we can uh, chat. So uh, Matt is head of operations at We Work Remotely. I'm sure that uh, some of you, most of you uh, know uh, about We Work Remotely, but I would love Matt if you could give us a little background and um, you know let us know what you're up to right now. Yeah, for sure. Um, so good to be here to start start things off. Um, I'm excited and I'm a big fan of the community. So uh, happy to be doing this. Um, yeah, so I mean, we work remotely again is something that I think a lot of people in the remote space have, have seen, or I hope that's the case. Um, we at this point are uh, the largest hiring site or uh, remote work community, at least on online. So we have for most metrics, um, we're, we're the largest by uh, number of jobs and the uh, number of applicants or job seekers that are looking for work uh, coming to our site. So um, it's been really exciting for me to be a part of that over the last, I've been here for three years. Um, my, one of my original uh, jobs actually when uh, Tiny Capital, which is the, our holding, uh, our parent company, uh, when they purchased it from, purchased wewerecomotely.com from uh, Basecamp actually in, uh, and from, from those folks, uh, Jason and, and uh, DHH in 2016, I believe, 2017. So I've been on since that acquisition happened and um, it's been great to, to see the amount of growth uh, over the last three years and especially over the past, over the last six months, seven months and uh, obvious, for obvious reasons, the remote work has kind of exploded. Um, so yeah, we have a few things in the go. We, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have a Slack group, which is, is fairly active. And um, we have, we actually just released a forum as well. Um, so it's forum.wewerkmilly.com. And uh, that's the hope there is to have some more long form discussion around best practices, around hiring um, and onboarding and that sort of thing. So those questions that I think everybody's looking for answers for, and I, I have, my opinions on these things, but again, um, my my opinions change as as I as I learn from other folks. And I've been I we have a podcast as well that I host, which is exciting, and uh, I still enjoy doing that. So, yeah, we have a number of things on the go, and, and we're just trying to continue to improve the experience on the job seeker side, be able to find work that's relevant for them, and uh, still try to provide quality jobs, job postings on our site, and uh, on the employer side, just try to again have the amount of exposure for those jobs to uh, collect quality applicants for them. So it's, it's kind of an interesting business to be a part of because there's two obviously sides of the marketplace and both are equally important, uh, providing a quality experience to the job seeker, as well as um, providing enough applicants and, and sourcing material for the uh, employers to post jobs uh, yeah. and get quality applicants. So that's, that's the idea. And we're, we're making some moves and hopefully improving the experience for the next uh months especially it's gonna be busy for us so so exciting things on the go but um that's that's the general idea awesome awesome no i've i've uh, had an opportunity to hop in and uh check out the slack group definitely uh you yeah. definitely need to check out uh we work remotely slack group it's a it's a really awesome community um as well and um and the forums also uh really just a fantastic resource uh really quick question as you were talking i was thinking about are you noticing anything, uh, a, a particular trend around specific roles that are coming up that you're seeing um, on the site at all? Um, I think, I think generally speaking, the trend of um, technology jobs being more remote is going to continue to to be the case. Um, we focus, or most of our jobs that are posted to our site are in the tax space. And, and that's obviously, um, it's pretty intuitive why that would be the case. But the interesting thing for us is um, we've seen over the past, again, since COVID and, and even prior to COVID, I think that there was, um, and the trend has been accelerated, but I think it was a trend originally uh, or before, again, pre-COVID days, uh, that was still something that was ramping up. Um, and what we're seeing is more jobs in things like healthcare, uh, finance, um, just 
jobs that you wouldn't necessarily think of when you consider remote work. So uh, that's been really cool to see. And, and especially um, like a lot of people are realizing that uh, things like a, accounting work or um, yeah, personal finance when it comes to like portfolio management and, and that sort of thing on the, the finance side is um, just, you don't need an office for that kind of thing. And, and we're seeing major banks, for example, go remote. We're seeing um, a, a lot of these, these sort of, uh, old school kind of industries realizing that uh, that remote is possible and in a lot of ways beneficial. So, um, yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I think the, the trends will always be there when it comes to uh, programming jobs and sales and marketing jobs in, in the tech space, but uh, we're seeing some non-traditional remote work uh, go remote, which is exciting to see. And, and that comes with its own challenges as well. And I think um, I don't want to, I don't want to chalk all of the trends and experiences over the past six months to the benefit of remote work, because obviously um, it's more complicated than that during this mm -hmm. time. And so, I, and I, and I like to point this out too, for people. So when they, when people that are exposed to remote work for the first time uh, are having done so during the past, during the COVID times, um, there's a lot of stress and anxiety that comes around, with, comes along with that. And I think it's important to separate remote work as a option from remote work during a pandemic. Yeah. Uh, very, two very, <laughs> two very different things. And like, I think really different. Yeah. Yeah. And so when people are at home and having isolated themselves because of the pandemic and, and all of a sudden now you're working from home and it's just, uh, it's forced upon you like that. I think that that's in a lot of ways, a negative experience. Um, and I hope that people are, are, and I hope that companies as well are, are viewing that in, the frame of the pandemic as opposed to in the frame of remote work and what they could do for folks. So definitely. Uh, yeah. definitely. Here, here's a question that came in from the community. Sure. Um, how, how are you managing remote ergonomics training? And um, is, this is, Speaking you know, that. <laughs> yeah, cause that's a big, that's like a big topic. Now people aren't, aren't used to working at their own workstations and, and really trying to better understand how they can be healthy about working, but how, how are you, are you guys doing anything around that as far as? Yeah, um, we, we definitely, I mean, it's, it's very up to the individual. I think for us as a company, as a team, um, I think having those conversations, so like just, I go for a lot of walks during the day, personally. Um, I have back issues as it is. So I'm, I'm in a fairly tall person. So I've had those for a long time. So I've kind of, it's kind of been embedded in, in the way that I've worked for the last, uh, for since I've been working remotely. So I think um, for us, we don't have a specific policy or like a set of a training practices that are uh, embedded in our, in our structure of our company personally. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a really important thing to bring up with your employer, especially for employers that aren't used to having questions like that. So maybe introducing that as a question for would, maybe it doesn't necessarily translate into your company all of a sudden coming up with a policy or giving you money for a better chair or whatever, like that might not happen right away. Um, but it's something that they should at least be aware of. I mean, hey, this is a problem that we need to solve for now. So I think um, having the conversation with your HR person or whoever that is in your company, uh, whether it's you know COO or, or whoever, um, management team should know about that. And, and I think uh, that's the first step. And then I think for individuals, I recommend like walking during the day for me is, is a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really, I go for a walk in the morning and, and um, my fiance makes fun of me because I just, I'm always walking around. Um, and it's like, it's, it's really something that I've had to be intentional about. So set reminders for, I set reminders for myself. Um, and sometimes you can get so deep into your work that, uh, it's hard to, to bring yourself back and, uh, and that will spiral. And again, trust me, I've had back problems for years. Um, and if you don't take care of yourself and don't get up during the day and walk around and stretch, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt you, uh, literally hurt you in the long run to do that. So, I mean, I, I, the way that I structure my day, I have a specific uh, Herman Miller chair, which I'm a big fan of. And uh, I go for walks in the morning. I go for a walk just after lunch. And then I go for a walk at the end of my day. Um, and those are between half hour and, and 45 per, per walk. So I, uh, I really, really highly recommend uh, walking through the day. Awesome. Yeah, I can, I definitely echo that. I'm, I'm six, three as well and have had back issues and it's just uh, a matter of fact, <laughs> I need, I need to talk to you about a, like a link to find out where that Herman Miller chair is. Cause I'm in the market for one and I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. It is a, it's a game changer and standing desks. And even like, 
I don't see the problem with if you has if anybody has um, a lot of calls during the day, like go for a walk during your call. Mm-hmm. It's it's just hey, try it. Like it, if it doesn't work, doesn't work. Um, but I think it's worthwhile to give it a shot because it could be could be a game changer. So um, I would recommend that for sure. Definitely, definitely. Thank you for that. Um, here's another question from the uh, from the group. Uh, what kinds of new businesses uh, have come? to we work remotely since the pandemic started. I think you touched on that. Uh, you know, you were mentioning like health, healthcare companies, et cetera. Um, you know, non-traditional remote companies are you you started seeing coming in as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a good question. I, I think um I, I think whatever industry you're in, and I'm gonna just quickly look at our site because I uh there's probably some here that I haven't even seen yet, uh just in terms of the the actual job itself and the company itself. But um, if you're looking for, a, if you're looking for work and, and want to try to work remotely, I would say to give it a shot, look at our site and see, uh, cause there's a good chance that something within your, within your area at least is, is covered and, uh, openings are available on whether it's our site or other sites, remote work, but like that are remote work specific, but I think it's worthwhile to, to take a look and, and see, cause you might be surprised. Like there's company, uh, there's jobs in again, things like accounting or insurance or um, finance and investment or in, um, healthcare. There's like we have uh, recently we had a, a virtual pharmacy company on our site and virtual nursing and um, therapy and all that kind of stuff. Like it's, it's, I think a lot of people don't realize the extent of that remote work has um, kind of permeated itself into almost every industry. So you know, I think it's it's important to take a look, and and you might be surprised about uh, what you might find on our site and our other sites that are out there, um, and just in terms of availability for remote work. So definitely, definitely look into it. And I'm sure like it's pretty intuitive, but I think those kinds of healthcare. And again, like you think about um, the company or work that you would assume would require some in-person reaction, like like a physician, for example. But if you really are, if remote work is important to you and you really want to um, have that as a part of your life, like it's, there are options out there. You might have to give up something that, you know, there, there's trade-offs to every decision like that. But uh, there's a lot of work that that's available for people that are in those kinds of industries. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool to see. And it's fairly surprising actually, even for somebody who's in the space. Definitely. Um, so let's see, what else do we, I'm just, I'm scanning through some of the, some of the questions that are, oh, good. that are popping in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bad people are asking questions. Yeah, no, definitely. Absolutely. We've okay. got, uh, we've got a pretty lively group. So uh, let's see here. Here's one that's, that's, that's interesting. I, I had uh, something like this pop up in one of a, a previous role. Um, how do you deal with destructive individualism within a team? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, destructive individualism. I, I guess I would counter that with a question of like, what is that? What does destructive individual mean to you exactly? Like, what 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 is that specifically? Because um, I think that means different things to different people. So, what does that look like for you? Um, right. But, so, yeah, and maybe in your well, case. Well, I was thinking like when I read that, I was thinking of you know the 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 individual who is like, look, I'm I'm going to do this on my own, um, and to the detriment of you know, the team or, or, or their department, if you will. And uh, someone who is essentially, I guess, silos themselves. Um, I mean, that's what I took from it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> I, I'm going to take a step back and, and hopefully this isn't a cop out, but uh, the, the destructive individual thing, I think I'm hope you hope that that comes through in a job interview prior to, to that. And I, there's questions that you can ask to, uh, to try to weed that out and, and get that information from somebody. If that's a character trait, that's, that's gonna, gonna come up. It's a hard question, I think, because once you're in, um, once, once you've hired that person and, and they start to, to show those kind of character traits, it's, it's a very difficult thing to try to work against. And I think um, the first thing is, and again, these are hopefully not cop out answers, but um, just communicate that. Like you have to be transparent and honest with, if that's what you're saying, if that's how, and honestly too, like, Um, I would say that if that's how people are presenting themselves, there's a good chance that they're just not communicating very well. So if you, if you go back to your, if you're in the, if you've hired that person, if you were a part of that, maybe you weren't, but let's say you were, um, there's a good chance that there's a lot of things that are, there's a reason you hired them. And hopefully that's, that's the case. 
So if they are coming across as destructive individuals within your team, you first and foremost want to see if, okay, is that really, is that true? Um, are, the people, are the people around them finding that as well? And uh, is that consistent across the feedback uh, for the company? And then you want to see, um, hop on a call because I think a lot of, in a lot of cases that sort of, um, that sentiment over Slack or over email um, maybe doesn't translate into reality for what that person is trying, how that person is trying to present themselves and, and what they're trying to get across. And maybe they're just not very good communicators. So solve for that problem by trying to dig a little deeper to see what the actual issue is. And if it's just a matter of communication, you can say, okay, this is how it's coming across to me and, and or this is how it's coming across to your teammates. Um, and and that's a that's a management issue, I think. And that's something that you should, if, if you're finding that, if you're hearing that from your employees um, or people that you are, managing, then that's something you need to get on right away. And then, and then if that's not a communication issue, um, then, then you have to make a decision. Um, and I think that the, the sooner you make that decision on whether you want to continue to work with this person is, is, um, is pretty key. Cause if you let that kind of permeate through the culture of a company, it's going to really, really hurt you. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, those, that would be the way that I would handle it. Um, but again, as, a, as an employee and if somebody, maybe he's not the manager of that person, I would just make sure that that gets translated up. And uh, a good good manager, a good executive will be able to solve for that problem very quickly. For sure, definitely. Thank you. Um, here's another great one. Do you, so do you see the current state of work impacting companies' willingness to open entry-level or junior or new graduate roles? Um, so, so the question is whether remote work is gonna help more junior people crack into an industry? Yeah. So yeah, uh, given the current state, right? So, you know, we're in a pandemic and uh, we're all remote. Um, and how do you, or, or do you see the given circumstances impacting um, the a company's uh, willingness to like try new things as far as opening up entry-level positions given, uh, given kind of the state of, of, of the workplace right now? Or has it even changed? Do you think it's even changed? Yeah, I think... Uh... It's a, it's a difficult question to answer, and it's a good question. Um, I, I think that, depending on what industry you're in, I, I think people are more willing to experiment, generally speaking, uh, when it comes to hiring practices and just the way that they work. Um, so there's there's that component of it, um, which, again, I think uh, it depends on what junior level position you're going after. I think, um, you know, I think what we've seen is we, there's definitely been an uptrend in our industry over the past uh, two months. So there was definitely a lull when it came to, uh, most companies went through a hiring freeze uh, in response. And that, um, that was across industry. Obviously there there's industries that are uh, affected more than ours. And I say ours and just the tech space in general. Um, but now we've, we've started to see, we've started to see that continue to come back again, which is great. But I, I know that, that not every industry is as fortunate as, um, as, as the tech space is when it comes to being able to isolate yourself and work through a pandemic. So very, very industry specific. Um, I think, I think now is a good time to, uh, as good a time as any to reach out to a company that you want to work for. And I, I, and I don't think that this advice has changed for, for the advice that I give to people hasn't changed. Um, which is that if you find a company that you want to work for, if you're a junior and, um, my advice to every, Buddy that's in that position is to uh, explain why you want to work there and how I did it. And I've said this before, but how I did it was I reached out to the owner of uh, Tiny, Andrew Wilkinson, um, and said, after he was kind enough to have a coffee with me and I didn't know who he was. Um, and he, it was just a friend of a friend contact. And so he was like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll meet it and have a coffee. And so at the time I was working in banking and um, I just got to talking with him and I was like, holy shit, like this guy's, this guy's the real deal. And so after my meeting with him, I, uh, sent him an email and said, I want to be a part of what you're doing and uh, I'll work for free for three months. Mm -hmm. Um, and that worked for me, but, and I know obviously that not everybody's in a position to work for free for three months and quit their job and go do that. So, but there are, and he actually said that he, he liked that as a move and wasn't willing to um, accept free labor, I guess. <laughs> uh, and so he paid me, but I think that that's like a, 
it's a pretty powerful gesture, right? So I, I think it comes down to, for junior people, I think it comes down to identifying the company that you want to work for, explaining to that company, uh, finding the right person, explaining to that company why you want to work there and, and offering them something to show you what kind of value you can provide. So if you're a um, content person writing, a, pointing out areas of their site that might um, improve from your work or just showing, hey, there's, here's something I've done for you and uh, feel free to use it. And if that, I love that as a move. Uh, we've done that. We've had people reach out to us and um, we had recently, there was a videographer that reached out and uh, gave us some of his, his work and said, hey, you can use it for any ad you want. This is something I do. And if you want to work for me, if you want to work with me, then uh, let me know. But if no, if not, then no harm done and you can use it as you want to. Um, so that I, and I, it's a fairly well-known gamut, I think, but it's one that's really powerful. So, um, and that, that advice hasn't changed, I don't think, over the past six months. But uh, it's a good question. What do, what do you think? I, I agree with you, man. I, I don't, I don't know that it's changed significantly. Um, in you know, in the way that uh, things are opening up for folks, you know, I'm, I'm really on board with kind of what you said. I mean, I've done that myself. You know, you, you're the story about you saying, listen, I'm going to go, I'm going to go work for free for three months. And, you know, I really want to be a part of what you're doing. I'd say the last, I'd say my last five roles, I've done that, you know, I've just reached straight out. And it, I, I've looked at it from the standpoint of like, I think off of the last several, it was a higher off of Twitter, right? Okay. Or LinkedIn of just reaching out to the, like you said, the right person and saying, listen, you know, I, I either maybe I did a site audit or maybe I wrote some content or, or you know, gave some feedback, um, but showed that I was really invested uh, personally in, you know, in the organization just from an outs, you know, outsider. Um, you know, I, I think that has a lot of merit and I, I, mm. I would uh, echo exactly what you said. I, I don't believe that um, anything's changed much. I think there's always opportunity. It's just a matter of how willing you are uh, to go out and get it and you know, mm -hmm. do what you need to do uh, to yeah. get that role. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, I, like, I think for junior people too, what matters more to a lot of companies is the, the way that just your, um, your activity level and your excitement and your energy that you bring to the table too. So there is that, um, obviously the skills you have are important, but there, I mean, you can learn skills as you go. Like if you're, if the company doesn't want you to, to do a certain work in a certain way, then they can always train you. But I think what's not trainable and very evident right off the bat when somebody does that kind of thing is just your passion for working for that company. And trust me, like if it's hard, it's not hard, it's um, unique to have that evident right away when somebody applies for a job. If somebody's very passionate right off the bat and it can explain that has done the research and is, uh, has spent the time and, and been thorough with their process, um, that goes a long way to show what kind of person you are uh, and how you would benefit the company. So I, I love that as a move uh, and I think it comes through. Definitely, definitely. Um, here's another, you mentioned skills. Um, what are some, uh, let me think about this for a second. What are some remote specific interview tips uh, since we're talking about you know, breaking in? Uh, what are some remote specific interview tips that you might have for conducting interviews? So trying to figure out if the person is good at remote work. Yeah. Uh, would be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good, it's, it's a really good question. <laughs> um, what's funny about that question and, and uh, I will answer the question, but what's funny about it is that every company, a lot of companies that I've talked to, um, cause I, in our podcast, we have, well, I asked that question a lot. Yeah. And uh, the reason I ask a lot is because it's very different for each company. And so each company will have their own process to figure out if they work well within the company and remote is a component of that, but it's more about trying to figure out whether they're a good fit for you and your team and the way that you work as a team. And cause there's remote workers that there's companies that are remote that work in a very different way than other companies that work remote. So like being a good remote worker is so broad and kind of vague that it's, it's more to do with how well you're going to fit into the culture of the company than whether you could be an effective remote worker in general, if that makes sense. Totally. Um, so I think that, um, I think it's, 
yeah, you, you kind of have to ask what kind of company you are um, and, and then see what, and try to make sure or try to see whether that person is going to fit uh, within, within your company. And, and I think um, there are like very obvious questions you can ask to see how, have you been effective working independently? Like what do you have, have you, have you thought through, if you were to work remotely, if you haven't done so yet, have you thought through what you would do in order to make sure that you were set up in a way that you weren't distracted during your work day and see what, see if that's something that they thought through. And if it's not, then maybe that's its own issue. Right. Um, or I actually like when somebody asks me questions about, and, and I haven't hired like huge teams before, but I have hired some people and, and I like when somebody uh, asks me questions about our policy when it comes to remote work. Mm -hmm. I think that that's an under underrated skill to, to start uh, to show that you've thought enough about it so that it's important enough for you to work well uh, for yourself to actually ask questions of the company uh, and the hiring manager to figure out, hey, is this a company that I want to work for? Because that mm -hmm. shows that you value your time. It shows that you value your own skills and you're willing to um, you, what's important to you is working in a company that uh, that you will work well in. So I don't know if that's a, um, I think that's my non-generic answer to that question. And hopefully, uh, hopefully that's helpful. Like, again, I've had people that ask me questions that are great questions that I, that put me on the spot to like, and uh, mm -hmm. just one of the questions I had once was, um, how do you make sure that your employees are set up so that they don't experience burnout? And how do you encourage like, and asking me that question, which is which is great because again, that shows that they've thought through enough what remote work is and what it can do to you, and have, have thought through what's important from a company perspective to make sure that you can work well remotely. So, um, I think it just comes down to research. research um, and uh, I hope I did I answer your question. I think you did, and and I uh, you know I, I think that uh, that's you you touched on something that was re actually really cool was uh, re a reminder for folks to you know realize that an interview process is not one way. Exactly. Um, um, I think a lot of times we may be in a position where it's like, okay, maybe somebody just lost a job or maybe someone just decided, you know, what, it's time for me to move on, and they get the opportunity for an interview, and it's like, oh, well, I'm here. I need to impress whoever is is interviewing me, but but always to remember, like, listen, it's it's a two way road. Like, you really need to to have a discussion, actually, a, a discussion, a dialogue, to find out if that's really for you. I mean, everything looks great on paper when it's on mm -hmm. paper, but you know, when you have an opportunity to really speak to somebody who's making a decision uh, and find out a bit more, it's it's in your best interest to to not be concerned about asking questions and, and putting folks on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and most good hiring managers and most, most good, um, yeah, people that are hiring will, will like that will, will appreciate good answers uh, or good questions in an interview process. I think that uh, it shows initiative and, and it shows that you value yourself and your time. So I think that that's important. And then there's obviously there's the like, don't like check references. It's, that's pretty obvious uh, when you're hiring somebody, like make sure that, but people don't, um, yeah. and make sure that you, uh, yeah, any red flags that come up or anything that you think isn't right in an interview process and, and hey, maybe this person has everything right on paper, but when you get on a call with them or over email, if, if something doesn't sit well with you, um, explore that. Like, don't just put that aside and, and say, oh, it's fine, this, this person has it. X, Y, Z experience, they're going to be good for us. Like that, those are all relevant things and it could present itself and manifest in a, in a different way. That's uh, later on that you might think to yourself, oh, I should have, should have explored that a little bit more. Uh, cause, cause it's hard to, with, without being a person, it's hard to get a lot of the vibes from people. So spend the time and, and a lot of good companies will have, like, if you look at automatic or if you look at major companies that do remote work, really, really well. Um, they, their interview process is like extensive. Yeah, they have. Uh, and I know Basecamp has like five or six rounds of interviews over they ask to do there's a certain paid amount of work that they do prior to onboarding somebody and they, they show so like, I think hiring somebody should be the most important part of or one of the key components of building a, 
a great business and do not just surface level hiring. It's, it's like, especially, especially on small teams too. It's, it's really the best investment of your time to do that well and just think through what you want to do uh, when it comes to hiring people. So. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of hiring and skills, um, are you seeing that, are there any specific um, soft or hard skills uh, for remote work that you're seeing um, a demand for that you feel that uh, a, a remote worker should have? Yeah. So, um, so understand, I think that, um, that when you're communicating over Slack and over email, um, both this is from a, a when you send emails, you, when you send correspondence, um, try to be keep an open mind as to how that might be received by somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's it, it's something that I've done. We I've worked for three years now remotely, and I still at times get emails, get Slack messages, and I think to myself, what did that person is that are they being passive aggressive? Are they being like, <laughs> I, I, I can't really tell. And so um, when, and both that's from like being a good uh, fellow employee, as well as sending out when you, when you send out things, make sure that it's uh, yeah, there's no, there's no gray area as to what you mean. Like it, we don't do, when we do interactions face to face in person, it's fairly obvious what we're trying to get across with our body language, with the way that we present it, with the way, if we're being sarcastic, if we're not, all that kind of stuff is pretty obvious and, but that's lost on, I think a lot of our written communication. So just keep that in mind. I think that again, it's, I still struggle with it myself. So um, I have not in any way perfected it, but um, I think, yeah, making sure that you're aware of that kind of thing and, and how it might be perceived is important. And then just, and that sort of lends itself to my next point, which is uh, if you can write well and concise um, it's like, it's so nice to work with somebody who can write well, um, write clearly and uh, in short segments and make their point across um, very quickly without having to go back and, uh, and like clarify things. And like, oh, I, and again, cause I do this myself, which is I write something, I don't spend enough time thinking about what I'm saying. And then I send it off and I'm like, and then that person has to respond and say, what do you mean by, this line or what did you say? What, what do you mean when you said this? And I, and then I, I think to myself, oh shit, I should have spent more time to actually write that out better. So mm -hmm. like save, do spend an extra five seconds, 10 seconds going over what you've sent somebody. Cause it shows that you respect them when you spend the time to actually write something in a, in a clear and concise way. Um, you respect their time. You don't waste anybody else's time and it makes you a better person to work with. So I think that, uh, that is a really important thing. Definitely. Yeah. It's, I find myself, it's a, well, it's a constant process, right? You're, you're constantly working to master that, uh, that skill, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a, an important one. And it's also, it's hard to, it's hard to know what that looks like and feels like if you haven't worked remotely in a team for any length of time. Um, and, and, and that just comes with experience, but having that mentality of, I need to get better at my writing um, or, and, and like it, it is a constant process. And as long as that's your mentality in your mindset when you work uh, remotely, then you are at least um, a step ahead of those who don't. So that, and that comes across, I think. So um, yeah, and that's something that I think a lot of people talk about, but hopefully that's, that, that is helpful. No, definitely. That's a, that's, that's actually, I'd say one of the most important skills for remote work right there. I, mean, I think you hit the nail right on the head uh, with that. Um, another question with regards to hiring. Um, do you have any particular advice about uh, successful onboarding? Like, do you, do you have a, any advice on a successful onboarding process? Um, I think, uh, well, yes, I, I, I think I do. Like I, the first, I would say, um, don't, when it comes to onboarding a remote worker, I, I think it's important to leave a sp very open amount of time to make sure that that person is, is, properly um, exposed to everything that they need to be exposed to, to be successful. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's really good practice to, um, to bring somebody on and expect them to action on something right away and to like, to show their impact right away. I know that's something people talk about and I think it's like, it's been written in books before and on blogs, like you want to make an impact right away when you bring on, when you start at a new company. Um, and I think there's a lot of pressure to, to 
show your value when you come on. And I, 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 I totally understand that. I just, from a, um, a hiring standpoint, I think it's, it's important to leave enough time for that person to have everything they need to be successful and to like lay the groundwork for understanding the company and understanding the customers, um, figuring out what you do that makes you different from other, the other com- um, competitors out there and uh, talk to your other, if you have, uh, if you're cross-functional, if you have lots of other uh, segments of your company, like talk to, if you're a copywriter, talk to the sales team, talk to the programmers, get a sense of how the team works. And then, um, and then try to get into where where you should go and set yourself up for, uh, where you can action. But I just think that it's, it's important for people to have a framework to, to work off of, as opposed to trying to do something right away. Cause you're, you're not going to, you're not going to likely make the progress you would have otherwise um, if you spend the time to get to know the company a bit better. So, yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, here's another question. This is, I actually love this question. Um, and if this speaks to your, the, uh, the podcast and uh, the questions, what's the thesis of uh, we work remotely's podcast uh, what time what type of guests do you have and um, and what type of conversations uh, are you having yeah um okay, good question i so i think um <laughs> these are great and i i purposely don't like to know questions when i come into to things like this because i think it makes it more genuine when you have to think of things on the spot um but the thesis, I would say, is the thesis has changed. I think the thesis when it first, when I first, if you could call it a thesis at all, was um, I wanted to talk to as many people that were, I would say, experts at remote work um, to get their take on all the questions that you're asking me right now, which is like, because everybody's got such different opinions on how to do this properly and, and what works best for them. Um, and so I was trying to offer as many resources from the job seeker side as well as the employer side and give them at least a library catalog of things. Here's what X company does for their onboarding. And here's how they look for employee employees. And here's what tools they use and what stack they use and what their pro like their, their day-to-day looks like and all that kind of stuff. Because um, when I first started, I didn't have a lot of resources when it came to how to set yourself up well. And so there, I saw that there was a lack of, um, yeah, documented sort of resources and, and uh, case studies, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that, that kind of, that worked well. I, I had, was able to have some really interesting conversations with people. Um, like I was able to talk to uh, the Wade from Zapier and Jason Fried from Basecamp and uh, a few other companies that I, I really respected and people that had built really great businesses. Um, I, I talked to Buffer and, uh, or, I don't know his name. Um, Anyways, Joel, um, sorry. And so like that kind of was kind of my deep dive into, okay, here's what this company does uh, and here's how they think about it and and all that kind of stuff, which was really, really a fun experience for me. And I like talking to people. um, So that was fun. And I don't know, it was kind of a fun project. And then it's evolved now to the point where I used to do it every week. I no longer do it every week because of my my job isn't a (laughs) full-time podcaster. Um, But it's, I, I want to explore different areas now when it comes to remote work. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I think we're in a different place now than they were when I first started it. So when I say the thesis is, has changed, I think it's, it's interesting to, to um, pull apart other areas that hadn't been exposed to remote work and see how, uh, see how they're doing and how they're thinking about it. So that's going to be the way that I move forward with the podcast. And uh, an example of that was I talked to uh, Mesh Lakani uh, last episode, and he is a uh, he's an investor, and as also he's a podcaster, and, and he looks at uh, he talks about personal finance and things like that, and he's based on New York. So I just thought, and this is me selfishly, I, I like to talk to people, and I I like to talk about things that I think are interesting. Mm-hmm. So when I talked to him, um, I was able to get into like the per- how are people thinking about their personal finances when this has happened over the past six months. So how, like, how has remote work changed him as an investor and, and what does New York look like right now, which was its own, probably could have been its own entire conversation and what we think remote work is going to do to larger cities in the future. So 
all this is to say, I think that uh, the interesting thing right now is to explore those areas that weren't, aren't necessarily to do with technology stacks and process and yeah. more to do with how remote work has shifted industries that are not typical for remote work, if that makes sense. Got it. No, that's, that's great. Actually. I, I think that's an awesome, an awesome place to be in as, as far as exploration uh, and inquiry. It's that's, that's, right on. that's perfect. Yeah. And it's fun. Like, it's fun. I like talking to people and uh, long form podcasts. I don't, I don't know if you've, uh, people can go to the weworkmorely.com and slash podcast and check it out. I think uh, it's pretty obvious that I just sort of ramble and like, <laughs> it, it's not, it, it's not a professional, like really next question, next question, next question, sort of seg. like, I just talk to people and it, we don't do a lot of editing, mm -hmm. which hopefully doesn't come across, but um, it's just kind of it's fun and it's open ended and, and hopefully people listen to hear like like to hear me talk. Um, so that's I don't know it's it's less thesis driven and more just kind of fun for me. Yeah, no, that's great. And by it is a great podcast, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, definitely plug that uh, for sure because I, I think if if you haven't heard uh, the We Work Remotely podcast, you definitely should. Um, some other questions, man. It's just, this is so great. Like, I, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I know, I know. Me too. I could, I could go. Yeah, this is great. This is. Uh, so let's see here. We got. Um, do you? Uh, let's see here. Ah, as um, this is perfect. This one just came in. <clears throat> as head of operations that we work remotely. What's your day to day like? And and uh, in addition to that, what are your biggest goals? Yeah. Um, so my day to day, I, I've talked about the amount of walks that I do during the day. Um, so we covered that. So my day to day is pretty varied because it's, it's across a lot of different areas of the business. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, there's a, there's a product component of my job that I, and I, there's a customer acquisition side of the job. There's the, um, you know, there's pure marketing and 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 one to one sales conversations that I have, and we're we're hiring more for that. Um, and then there's just like a strategy component of it as well. So my day to day is really all over the place. Um, I am the only thing that I keep in terms of structure is I, I try to um, segment my day for different projects. So if I require into a specific writing project, for example, or a research project, it would be likely after lunch in the morning i have i just try to to focus more on emails and uh, uh do this sort of thing if if we're if they're available and um and then every once in a while i have a podcast we do um for most of the people that i work with we have uh we have the start of the week is planning for uh the, like what we want to get done uh wednesdays are our weekly team check-ins so i just actually before I hopped on here, we were just wrapping up our team call, which is why I was a little late, but um, we have team calls on Wednesdays and then Thursdays, I try to either get a podcast in um, and I, there's a lot of other things that are, that are going on. So Thursdays are typically podcast days, but you know, it, it depends on the schedule. And then, and then Fridays are just like wrap up for the week kind of thing. So loosely that's the way that I try to structure it. But um as long as I, I, I typically work, I'm online between uh, eight-ish and five-ish and mm -hmm. with an hour in the middle to go for a walk. And then, um, yeah, I, I try to break up the day because I, I tend to work better when I, after lunch, when it comes to deeper work. So that's just me. Awesome, awesome. I think we have, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, if there's one that comes through. I've got one in particular myself, but if there's one that comes through, uh, from the board, anyone last question? Okay, well, I'll uh, I'll drop mine in, and and that is from where we're at now. What do you see? Um, let's say, let's call it the next six six to eight months. Um, do you have any kind of forecast uh, with regards to remote work? or to hiring and uh, from, you know, either job seeker side or from uh, employer side, do you have any, anything that, any trends that you're seeing that, um, you know, that would inform maybe some sort of forecast on your end? Yeah, I, uh, 
I like forecasts because it's they're almost never correct. But I will say, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I will say though that the I think that the uh, time that we're experiencing now, and obviously, like there's a lot more than just remote work that's happening right now, both um, no matter where you are, but you know, more, more specifically in North America and, and like this, because I'm from obviously Canadian and um, there's a lot going on. So there's that component of it. And I, I don't want to downplay the, uh, the importance and like the, uh, how difficult that has been for a lot of people. So I think that as much as we are seeing the remote work trend go forward and, and continue to be embedded into what work looks like over the next six months to a year, there's a lot of people that uh, when they do work remotely are going to be affected in a way that they didn't think that they would be. And I think that it's important for people to keep in mind that it's okay to, uh, I, I advocate for a lot for remote work and we're all in that space, but it's okay to not have a great experience working remotely. There's a lot of factors that are in play with it. And um, I just think it's important to keep that in mind. Like it's, it's not all easy and it's not all something that people are going to get and right away and, and maybe it won't work for them. Um, so that, and that's okay. Like it, it's, it's important, I think, to keep that in mind. So um, in terms of trend, I, I think in January, we tend to see a, a bit of a drop in the amount of employers that post jobs on our site come late November into December. Obviously that's just a slower time for hiring. Um, but I think, 2021 is going to be a really interesting year for remote work. Um, and I've said this for a while now, but I think what's going to happen with the optionality piece of working in a space with people. So it's a terrible way of saying co-working spaces and mm -hmm. areas that uh, when things do open up, depending on where you are, um, I think that trend of what, what, um, we were trying to do, uh, and, and they did an awful job of it, but they tried to allow people to work flexibly um, <laughs> and have options when it, came to, when it comes to working either at, from home or going to a workspace. If I was to make a prediction, I think that um, we will start to see more and more open workspaces that, that are uh, lots of different kinds of jobs working in the same space and what that could look like and mean for interactions with that for meeting new people for um, just the overall economy of specific areas like i think um, the midwest and and sort of the central parts of the u.s are going to look very different uh, obviously we're seeing this trend from san francisco people that are tend to move out of the bay area and, and into areas that are less expensive to live so that's really interesting. Um, but I think like going back to my original point of co-working spaces and areas that are um, where people interact that wouldn't have otherwise interact interacted, I think that's kind of a fun thing to explore and to see how, what, what that does for society when um, you don't have offices that are like, that are designated for specific companies, when you have open areas that have all these different people working in different capacities and working remotely, but just, um, uh, interacting in a way that wouldn't have otherwise happened if people were still in this sort of office, uh, sort of 1960s and upwards mentality of working in an office from nine to five. Mm -hmm. I just think that there's like, and again, I'm not explaining it very well, but like there's knock on effects of what that does for society as a whole, when mm -hmm. it comes to how people interact, how people meet each other uh, and just, yeah, the, the, the social component of a lot of these different cities and areas, I think is really, is gonna change. And so um, I think that's gonna be where we see the biggest change of the next year. And there's a whole other component of uh, like mental health and encouraging people to go out of the comfort zone and back to what normal feels like and looks like mm -hmm. post pandemic. Um, but from a pure remote work standpoint, I think that that's kind of a fun thing to to try to, uh, dwell on or, or think about. It's a, it's a fun thought experiment. Definitely. Definitely. Well, Matt, uh, I can't thank you enough for spending you know, the hour with us. And uh, I really, it's been an honor and a joy to speak with you. Um, is there anything you'd like to leave the, um, the, the 
attendees here on the webinar with, um, or you know, is there a way that uh, they can reach out and connect with you um, if they have any other questions that they you know didn't get answered today or? Yeah, yeah, totally. So I, I mean, thank you for having me. This was great, and I, um, I never know with these kinds of things, honestly. Like if I'm, if I'm making any sense. So uh, if you have any, like, if you have any uh, questions or if I didn't uh, explain myself well for a question that you may have asked, then uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, it's matt at weworkremotely.com. Um, so pretty, pretty straightforward and, and feel free to reach out to me if, with anything that we talked about because happy to chat. Um, so there's that. Uh, I, I'm on Twitter. Don't know what my, don't know what my handle is i don't really use twitter um i would say the best resources for us to to see what we're doing and what we're up to is uh, just we work mm -hmm. uh, as uh, as eric mentioned we have the slack group and we have the forum as well and which is sort of in its early stages but hopefully we're going to be building out some of the content there and hopefully it's helpful to people uh, we also have this learning community we're calling and we've um, played around with different uh so the concept of it is this open uh, resource, set of resources for job seekers. It's it's at learn.wework.com, and uh, we can link to that. Or if you have, you can reach out to me directly if you can't find it. But uh, it's just a set of resources for people that are looking for remote work. So ho uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, and then yeah, just just um, if you're looking for work, make sure you go to wework.com and uh, check it out. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you again, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you again soon and uh, spending some more time chatting. I yeah, really yeah, for sure. This was this was great. Um, yeah, definitely don't don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, if you have any questions. Anybody that's listening to this, and yeah, let's uh, let's do it again because I'm sure we have a lot more to talk about. Definitely. Have an excellent rest of your day. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.